So you say that the ego that develops, that grows, demands more, demands more of what? It could be very different things. It demands more to know what is life, the meaning of life, how to fulfill the excessive ego as opposed to my generation and quickly scrutinizes whether things are worthwhile or not. In short, they're more egoistic. Does it also have to do with the quality of the ego? The quality too. He no longer fulfills himself with the different small things that were typical of my generation. When I got a bicycle, for me it was a fulfillment for a year or two. And for him it's, you have a bike, you do, you don't, you don't. Meaning, he's searching for more essential things. For me, looking at an airplane flying in the sky was an adventure. I flew with my grandchild to Switzerland, to France. For him it was like, yeah, we're flying in a plane. And it was really strange for me to see because I thought that I'm taking him on such an adventure. And for him, yeah, it's fine. Where's this? Where's that? He related to these things as a grown-up. Still as a child, but really, on the inside, there's a person who's not impressed with material things. They're qualitatively and quantitatively impressed by different things. What is he impressed by? I don't know. He's playing on his computer, and out of his own deficiency, he says that here there's supposed to be this kind of button, and there that kind of button. It's supposed to be like this and like that that the computer that was prepared for him by the previous generation, he knows that they prepared it and that this is how it has to be. This generation, they opened the things that were made for them with an obvious understanding that it was made for them. This is how it is with every generation. No, I think that this is something that I see only on this generation, because in our generation, we used to form things, shape things, discover things. It was a generation that had nothing, but it was all new. Cars, planes, it came into our life. We made these things. And for him, the skies, the ground are full of different things. He goes everywhere, everything's clear to him. He's not impressed by mountains, by what he sees in the supermarkets, amusement parks, everything. Everything's obvious. Yeah. The ego became more sophisticated. Previously you said that your children weren't so exposed to external influence, so therefore they're not really a part of these generations. External influence, how does it influence the generation? In every way, because man's ego, it's like Plato, and what you get depends on the external society. So there's this kind of game between the inner component, which is the ego. The ego, all in all, what is it ready for? In the past, you used clay, then marble, then more sophisticated materials for building, plastic and so on. Today your entire house is made out of plastic, 10 stories high. So that's the difference actually, but how to build and what to build, this is determined by the generation. But the matter with which you build, that comes from within, from the developing desire. You said that your generation and the generation after created things in the world, new things. And the new generations, they already come into a world with different existing things and therefore they're not that impressed by them. They're not that impressed by them and they don't really have what to add to the corporeal world, the world of action, so to speak. 
So what can they do in the world? We did everything before them. They don't have that much to add to the corporeal world, so what? It's like there was Newton's physics and suddenly came Einstein and opened up new dimensions. Same thing here. We build the hardware, this kind, that kind, but the new software, the going into matter with tweezers, into genetics, into different things, where the origin of life is, into the brain and beyond it, they have plenty of things to do. I worked in an institute for brain research as a student and later on compared to what you have today compared with today's abilities they have plenty of things to do and they all have to do with internality where is it within the cell within the brain, in man's psychology, beyond the boundaries of the mind, and so on. Meaning, they're entering the other side of life. What is the other side of life? It's still corporeality, but it's borderline corporeality. There we lose the connection with matter. It's kind of riding on matter. So, the more sophisticated the ego is, the greater it is, the more a person demands of life. So, this more developed, sophisticated ego, what does it demand? It's intended to perceive the depth of life. And how can we define this depth? For them, it's natural. I'm impressed by his indifference. It's not even indifference. It's like, it's of the ordinary. There's nothing exciting about these things. For him, it's natural. So, this gadget, what is it for? For this. Okay, great. He swallowed it up already. It's in use. He relates to these things differently. He's not impressed by the things he has in his hands, but what can I achieve by it? This is where the question is directed, actually. So there is the generation that built the infrastructure, then you have the generation that looks into the depth of things. I'd put it this way. My generation built the hardware. The generation that came afterwards, all in all, built the software. And the younger generation now is going to use it. And what will the next generation do? Where are we headed? I think that they will enter the reality that we will attain by these things and will live in it. And what does this have to do with spirituality? They'll have to discover spirituality. Their work is to shift from computers and from different forms that research matter into the forces.